Morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Apple campus. Uh, we have a lot of iPhone app developers in the audience and members of our press and some of the teams who have worked on some of the things that we're going to show you today. We're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to give you a preview of iPhone OS. And I'm Greg Joswick, and I'm Vice President of iPod and iPhone Product Marketing. And I'll be joined by Scott Forstall. And we'll give you a preview of this and share some of our future plans for the iPhone OS and what we're calling version 3.0. Before we get into our plans, however, I thought I'd spend a few minutes reminding us where we're at with the iPhone. Because the iPhone is now, as of this week, in 80 countries around the world. It's amazing because we started less than two years ago in one country. And actually, even a year ago, we were just in a handful of countries. And now we're in 80 countries around the world. And before we ever shipped our first iPhone, we set a very aggressive and public goal that we would sell 10 million iPhones in our first calendar year, calendar year 2008. And we blew that number away. So 13.7 million iPhones last year, calendar 2008. And if you look at our iPhone sales from the time that we started shipping in June of 2007 through the end of this last calendar year, you see that we've sold 17 million iPhones. And there's a clear inflection point of when we introduced the iPhone 3G. And you see the great acceptance we've had of this product. But the iPhone isn't the only product that runs the iPhone OS. The iPod Touch also runs the iPhone OS. And if you look at that same time period, through the end of this past calendar year, through the end of 2008, we've sold over 30 million devices, over 30 million units of iPhone and iPod Touch through the end of 2008, providing a great opportunity for our app developers. This also, of course, provided a great opportunity for app developers. And we first introduced the beta of this iPhone SDK here on this stage just one year ago. And in this one year's time, we've had over 800,000 downloads of the free iPhone SDK. Absolutely amazing. And we've had over 50,000 individuals and development companies join our paid iPhone developer program. It has gotten off to a gigantic start. And if we look at these developers, I find it very interesting that most of them, over 60% of them, had never developed for any Apple platform before. And yet they were able to quickly create some amazing apps in the App Store. And the App Store's appeal to Big developers, small developers, you know, big developers, a good example of that's like Gameloft. And if I could read you this quote, Gameloft says that the iPhone OS is provided the next great development platform for Gameloft. The App Store has been simply amazing. And they already have over 20 games in the App Store. And they've had over 2 million paid downloads in just a few short months. That's incredible. Already over 20 games and already over 2 million apps that have been sold by Gameloft. But what's really exciting is that the App Store levels the playing field. And it makes it so the small guys can succeed as well. And an example of that is Steve Demeter. I see him in the crowd now, who is a, a, a one-man shop. And maybe rather than have me read his words, we've got a short video of Steve. I'm a long-time gamer. I always wanted to do a game. Ever since I was five, my parents had this Atari 2600 in the basement, and I just, I spent so long just down there trying to figure out those games. For the past 10 years, I've been working in a boring job, and I knew I wanted more than that for myself. So when I first discovered the iPhone SDK, I saw that it was a huge opportunity. I was like, wow, I can do a game on my own terms. The SDK was fantastic. It was an all-in-one end-to-end tool chain. Apple saying to you, look, we've dropped this in your hands. Just go and just have fun with it. I did the game for my idea to demo in, in 10 days. I would go to work, get home at 5 p.m., code till 5 a.m., and then go out to work at 8 a.m. And then the App Store launched in June. My buddy Patrick uh, called me up. He's like, dude, like, App Store is like open and like eighth place. And I'm like, oh my god. I've really enjoyed the kind of success that Apple has allowed me to have. 
When I got the first payments, it's wired to your account by territory. Canada came in, and then like Japan came in, and then USA came in, and it was like. I don't have the budget to, you know, be a big company and have a big marketing plan, but the App Store is a meritocracy. You can be some guy in a garage, and if you're making a game that people really enjoy and has something to offer uniquely, it'll get noticed. I'm Steve Demeter, creator of Trism. So clearly with the App Store appealing to big developers, small developers, and those in between, there's no surprise that we've had an explosion of apps. But we've had over 25,000 apps now in the App Store today. Absolutely amazing. And we have certainly, certainly have had a lot of curiosity over the App Store submission process. But I'm happy to report that in our most current full month of data in February, that 96% of apps that were submitted were approved. And we're moving apps through the store faster than we ever have, because 98% of those apps were approved in seven days or less. And of course, the most amazing statistic of all is from our customers, the fact that customers love the App Store. And we now have passed 800 million downloads in the App Store. And that's in eight months' time. 800 million downloads. So I have to thank you, the developers, both in the crowd and, and out there for developing these great apps and giving our customers more than 25,000 more reasons to want an iPhone or an iPod Touch. Thank you very much. So clearly, we've created something profound, amazing, certainly something we haven't seen the likes of before. And this is just the beginning. We're just scratching the surface. We're eight months into this app store. Imagine where it's going to be in the coming months or, or a year from now. And to help give us a glimpse of that future, I'd like to bring Scott Forstall up to give us a preview of iPhone OS 3.0. Okay. All right, I'm here to tell you about iPhone OS 3.0. Now this is a major update to the iPhone operating system. And that's the operating system that runs on all iPhones and iPod Touches. It comes with incredible features for developers and for our customers. Let me start by telling you what we're doing for developers. A year ago, we announced the native iPhone SDK, and with it, we enabled developers to use the same native APIs and tools that we use internally to build all of the applications that ship as part of the iPhone. Now, our goal here was to make developers successful. We gave them the best tools and APIs and frameworks ever for building applications. And what they did with this blew us away. As Josh showed, to the tune of over 25,000 apps in eight months. It's incredible. So we've spent the last year working hard to make this SDK even better. And I'm happy to say that with iPhone 3.0 comes the next generation of this native SDK. And with it come more than 1,000 new APIs. This is a lot of functionality to make these apps even easier to develop and allow developers to add even more functionality. Let me talk you through just a little bit of the functionality from this new SDK, starting with enhancements we're making to the App Store. Now, the App Store has been phenomenal. As you heard, over 800 million applications have been downloaded. This is amazing. It is the best way ever for developers to get their applications out to our collective tens of millions of users. It's also a great business deal. Developers can give their apps away for free, or if they choose, they can sell them. If they sell them, the developer picks the price. 70% of the revenue from that price goes straight to the developer. There are no credit card fees. In fact, there are no hosting fees or other infrastructure fees. Apple covers all of that. 
and developers are paid monthly. So it is a great business deal. But we've been listening. And some developers have come to us saying there are other business models they'd love to support for their applications. For instance, subscriptions. Right? There are publishers out there of things like magazines that would love to have a magazine application right on the store where you can renew that subscription inside the application. There are game developers who would love to add additional levels and be able to sell game levels right from within the game. And there's a lot of other new content that developers like to sell inside an application. For instance, an ebook. Today, you have to sell one application per book. But there are ebook developers who would love to sell a generic ebook application and have a bookstore built into the app. Well, I'm happy to say that we are supporting all of these additional purchase models in iPhone 3.0. And we're doing it with what we call in app purchase. Let me show you how it works. Let's say you have an e magazine. In iPhone 3.0, Right from within this application, you'll be able to purchase the renewal. So you get this standard panel, it comes up and says, in this case, would you like to purchase six more months for $4.99? When you tap buy, you'll continue to receive all of the issues to this magazine right inside the app. Next, a game. You can now purchase a game that would come with, say, 10 levels. And when you're done playing those 10 levels, just by the tap of your finger, you could purchase the next 10 levels for the game. When you say you'd like to buy it, the game will automatically download those levels right into the game. One more example, city guides. Again, before iPhone 3.0, you would need to sell one application per guide. With iPhone 3.0, you can sell a generic city guide application, and then sell city packs. So you can see here, I've already purchased, say, the Boston and the New York City pack. But let's say I want to purchase Chicago. That's as easy as tapping on Chicago. And it brings up this standard alert asking me if I'd like to purchase it. Now here's where it's really nice. This whole thing is tied directly into the iTunes store. So when you tap on Buy, it brings up a standard iTunes credential panel. In a secure way, you now get your username, you type in your password, and when you do, it talks back to our iTunes store, validates the account, and when it approves the purchase, the application is free to download that city guide right into the app. And now, you're good to go. So, in-app purchase. The business model for in-app purchase is the same as for the app store, meaning, the developer sets the price for in-app purchase items. Again, 70% of the revenue goes straight to the developer. There are no credit card fees. We will cover all the credit card fees. And developers are paid monthly. Now, to keep the model simple for the consumer, this is for paid apps only. So if a developer sells an application, and it makes sense in that application to have an in-app purchase, say for a subscription, you're absolutely happy to go ahead and do that. But to keep it simple, when a consumer sees a free application, free apps remain free. You won't be asked ever to buy something inside that free application. And that's what we're doing for in-app purchase. Next, support for peer-to-peer -peer connectivity. And this is especially great for peer-to-peer -peer games. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a few kids in the back seat of the car, and they each have their own iPhone or iPod Touch, and they'd like to play backgammon against each other. With the APIs now built in to iPhone 3.0, when you touch, say, a multiplayer button, it'll bring up a standard system panel, which finds all the other iPhones and iPod Touches in that area that are currently playing that game. You can choose who you'd like to play against. It automatically sends a request to them. When they accept it, it forms an IP connection, and the game is off and running peer-to-peer. -peer. So peer-to-peer -peer connectivity. What we provide here is automatic discovery. We'll automatically discover other applications 
that are running around you in your proximity. We do it all wirelessly over Bluetooth. So you don't need to join a Wi-Fi network. There doesn't need to be a Wi-Fi network. It's all done wirelessly. In addition, there's no pairing. This is all completely seamless, both for the developer and for the end user. It's seamless. We use Bonjour as the technology to discover what applications are running and who wants to play. And this isn't just for games. Now, we think this is great for games, and it'll unlock a lot of peer-to-peer -peer games. But this works for any peer-to-peer -peer application. So let's say you're a salesperson, and you're at a, a sales meeting for your company. And you'd love to give someone a sales lead, send them a contact. Well, your company could build an application easily using this API that will automatically find your colleague's phone, make that connection, allow you to share that contact, walk away, you're done. So peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, we think it's going to be great in the iPhone 3O SDK. Next, accessories. We have this thriving ecosystem for accessories. There are thousands of developers building thousands and thousands of accessories that work great with iPods and with iPhones. Right? Here's one of the more popular ones, a speaker. And with a speaker, you can plug your iPhone right into it and now listen to your music right over that speaker. Well, with the iPhone 3.0 SDK, we're going to take this support to the next level. We're going to enable accessory developers to build custom applications that talk right to the accessory. So in this example, the speaker manufacturer could build an application, an equalizer application, that is actually controlling directly the hardware equalizer of the speaker. So here's another example, an FM transmitter. FM transmitters are great if you uh, have, say, a car that doesn't have a built-in iPod connector. And what they do is they allow you to stream your music from your iPhone over uh, FM right to your car stereo. Well, with iPhone 3.0, the developer can build a custom application that pairs up with this accessory, with that FM transmitter, and automatically finds the optimal FM station over which to broadcast, tunes it in automatically, and now you're listening to your music. Now, here's another class of applications we think are going to be really interesting. And that are met, those are medical devices. You could have, say, a blood pressure cuff and write a custom application now which takes your blood pressure. You could take it, it could record it over time, it can chart it, and if there's an issue or a, you know, a downward trend that you're worried about, it could optionally have a button to send your blood pressure history to your doctor, to your healthcare professional. So what we're doing is we're enabling developers now to take more advantage of accessories, writing custom applications that can talk directly to these accessories. They talk to the accessories over the dock connector, and now also wirelessly over Bluetooth. We support all the standard built-in protocols so these are things like playing music and pausing music, getting album artwork. In addition, you can build your own custom protocols if you want. So you have all the power you need to build an accessory, build a custom application to take the best advantage of that, and talk to that accessory in whatever way you need to to make it great. And that's what we're doing for accessories. Next, maps. Now, we've worked with Google to build an incredible Maps application into the iPhone. And we've had developers who have come to us and said, you know, I'd love to embed a map into my application. And some developers have gone out and licensed tiles themselves and already done this. But they keep coming back to us asking us to build something that feels natural, a Cocoa Touch control that can wrap our Maps control and put it into their application. And that's exactly what we're doing with iPhone 3.0. We're taking the heart of the Maps application and making it a public API 
So developers can now embed that map right in their app. Here's an example. Let's say you have a concierge application. Right up there now is the public maps API embedded, a control embedded right in there. Now this really is the heart of our map application. And that means you have things like pinch and zoom. It supports satellite view and hybrid view and standard map view. You can even add your own custom annotations right on top of the map. You can add your own location in there, and it'll track your location based on GPS if you're on an iPhone 3G, and Wi-Fi and cell tower triangulation. And you can even reverse geocode your location. So a maps control using that Google map service that you can now embed directly into your application. We think this is going to be really useful. We know a lot of developers out there, they would love to embed this Google Map service right in their app. Now, there is one more thing we're doing with Maps. And that is, we're enabling developers to use core location as the basis of turn-by-turn -turn direction applications. So core location gives you your location uh, on an iPhone 3G with GPS also with Wi-Fi and cell tower triangulation. And now you can build a turn-by-turn -turn direction using that real-time location from core location. Now there is one catch. It is bring your own maps. Due to licensing, we cannot pass on the right to use the built-in map tiles for turn-by-turn. -turn. Now there are already a lot of developers out there who either own their own map tiles or have licensed them to use with turn-by-turn. And so for all of you, you'll now be able to use and create turn-by-turn -turn direction applications for the iPhone. Next, push notification. You know, we're late on this one. We announced this last year. And we expected to have this up in production by the end of the year. And we didn't. And there's a few reasons for this. Most importantly, Within two months of launching the App Store, we had over 1,000 applications on the App Store. And we had over 100 million applications that had been downloaded. And a huge number of developers came to us saying how excited they were about push notifications and how they were going to use it in volumes that we hadn't considered. And so we had to completely re-architect the server infrastructure for push notifications. And that's what we've spent this last six months doing, completely re-architecting it to make it really, really scalable. And that was when we had 100 million downloads. Now we've had over 800 million downloads. So this is what we've been targeting. So now we're good to go. Now, we were asked, well, why don't you just do background processes? I mean, it's, it's easier for us to do background processes. And the answer is, it's not good for the customer for a number of reasons. One is battery life. Background processes drain your battery. They don't let your phone go to sleep when it needs to. They don't let it go to the lowest power state. And actually, we, we've been testing this. We've been running some background processes on some other phones. And I remember one test in particular. We took a popular instant messaging client. And we ran it on a Windows mobile phone, on an Android phone, and on a BlackBerry. Didn't send or receive any instant messages just turn the app on so it would run in the background. And we measured the standby time, right? So the battery life as measured by standby time. And in all cases, the standby time dropped by 80% or more just by having that background process on. Now, anything you're going to do is going to take some battery life. Even push notifications take some. So we took a third-party push notification instant messaging application, ran it on iPhone 3.0, and that battery life the standby only decreased by 23%. So it's a much better model for battery life. Next, performance. By the very nature, a background process is chewing up CPU cycles. And so it's slowing down that foreground application that you want to be snappy. So because of that, we are doing push notifications, and we're really excited about it. And we've been working with third-party developers already, and they are thrilled with what we can offer. Here's how it works. Let's say you have an instant messaging application. And while it's running, it's connected to your server. 
So if you want to send a notification up there, just talk right to your application. But when you quit the application, you no longer have this connection open. That's where the Apple push notification service comes into play. It has a persistent connection open to the phone. And so this third party server just passes its notifications through the Apple push notification server. There are three types of notifications you can push. One is a badge, so you can badge how many items are waiting for the user. You can also badge audio alerts. And this can be whatever sound you want for your application. It's customizable for your application. You can also send text alerts. Text alerts appear the same way that SMSs appear. And you can even add a button where if the user taps on that button, they'll launch right into your application. Now, of course, the reason we're doing these, and the nice part about it, is it scales. It scales to all of these third-party services that want to take advantage of it. And we're really excited about that. So push notifications. It is a unified, generic push notification service for all developers. It preserves your battery life. It maintains the performance of your phone. And we've optimized it for mobile networks. Now, as Josh said earlier, we're in over 80 countries around the world this week. And that's with over 25 carriers. And every carrier has slightly different configurations of their networks. So we're doing all the hard work for you of making sure that we keep that persistent connection open to the phone so you don't have to. And it is now really scalable, and we're ready to go. So these are only a few of the more than 1,000 APIs that make up the SDK in iPhone 3.0. Let me touch on just a few more of these uh, in-app email. We now have a sheet, an email sheet, that you can use right from your application so you don't have to leave it to send an email. Proximity sensor is now a public API. This is a big one, iPod library access. Developers can now access, browse, and play music right out of the built-in iPod library on the phone. Uh, streaming audio and video. We're introducing a new standard for streaming audio and video over HTTP, so it even goes through firewalls. Make the Shake API public, so you can use shaking. Uh, we've got made data detectors and core data we've added. An in-game voice. We've even, if you have a, a game that plays over Wi-Fi, we have built-in voice chat APIs you can use to add voice into your game. So again, just a few of the over 1,000 APIs we're adding for developers. This is a big update for the iPhone SDK. Now, a couple weeks ago, we called up a few developers and asked them to come in and get a sneak peek at the iPhone 3.0 SDK and see what they could do in only two weeks. And what they've done has just blown me away. So I'd like to bring them up here, a few of them, to show you and tell you what they've accomplished with iPhone 3.0. We have some phones here that are tethered, so they can have their demos on it, all connected up to the screen. And they'll go ahead and give you some demos. Let's start with Mebo. With over 45 million people sending over 5 billion messages a month, Mebo is one of the fastest growing social websites out there. And now they're moving it native on the iPhone. To talk you through their experiences, I'd like to invite up Seth Sternberg. Seth? Hello there. My name is Seth Sternberg, and I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO of Mebo, which is the web's real-time communication platform. And I'm here with Paul Soden, one of our developers. So we're really excited that Apple invited us here today because, as Scott said, we're announcing that for the first time, Mebo's developed a native iPhone application. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the application. Now, Mebo's goal is to let our users communicate live with their friends across the web and at Mebo.com regardless of which IM network that they may be on. And today, we're doing that for 45 million unique users worldwide on a monthly basis. So if we take a look at the application that we've built here, we've got friends from traditional IM networks like AOL and MSN. 
friends from new IM networks like Facebook and MySpace, and also friends from IM networks that Mebo powers through our new property called Community IM, where we're embedded both on our partner sites and over at Mebo.com, such as News Corp's gaming site, IGN, and the social network, My Yearbook. So why don't we go ahead and tap on Paul's name there. And it looks like he wants to catch a movie sometime. So let's go ahead and say, sure, Watchmen. <laughs> awesome. Now, of course, you may be wondering, why didn't Mebo wait until now to build a native iPhone application? And as you can see, I just got a push notification from my girlfriend, and she's asking if I can grab a bit of milk on the way home. So we're going to answer that and keep me out of trouble. Mebo felt that push notifications was the last bit of technology in the iPhone that we needed to build a truly fantastic experience for the users natively. We didn't want to drain their battery life, and we wanted a really simple way for them to be able to quit out of the application and easily get back in when it made sense. So why don't we go ahead and respond to Monica. Say, yes, dear. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, we also wanted to put just a little bit of extra spice in our application on the iPhone as well. And so you can see down at the bottom, I've got social feeds. And it looks like I've got a new notification there. So let's go ahead and click on that. So our partners in Community IM can let users like on Flickster know that a friend of mine on Flickster rated a movie. Or over on I Beat You, it looks like Elaine added me as a friend. Great. So we're really excited about the application that we're bringing natively to the iPhone. Thank you guys very much. The goal was to build something that was just completely seamless between Mebo's properties on the web and Mebo on the iPhone. And we think we've created something very special. Take care. As you can see, Mebo is a perfect candidate for push notifications. And in fact, it's the reason they can bring it to the iPhone now with iPhone 3.0. Next, EA, Electronic Arts. Electronic Arts is one of the largest game developers in the world. And they already have 10 great games on the App Store, including Tetris, Spore, SimCity, and Monopoly. To uh, tell you what their experiences have been like with the iPhone 3.0 SDK, I'd like to bring up Travis Boatman. Travis? Hey, everybody. So um, it's really excited to be here again. The last time John and I were here on stage was about a year ago when we actually announced Spore um, for the original SDK launch. And uh, after the SDK launch, we've seen a tremendous explosion of usage and innovation in the mobile game space. So we're really excited to be back here again today to talk about the 3.0 version. Now, the 3.0 version is bringing a lot of new interesting features, and we wanted to have a game that would demonstrate the use of some of these features. And the game we have chosen is a game that sold over 100 million consumers, or 100 million units worldwide. And that game is, of course, The Sims. Now, you can see here on The Sims, we've got a character who's waving at us. He's probably as comfortable as I am here on stage, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll call him Scott. Um, so let's go ahead and bring Scott into the game. Um, now we're going to be, uh, we're only showing you one small room of the Sims, Sims world here, just uh, Scott's house. Um, so we're seeing Scott's doing a tour of the house. It's all done beautifully in 3D. Um, and again, this is only done with a couple weeks of work here on site. Um, one of the interesting features about this, as you'll see in the lower left-hand corner, um, Scott's got a whole bunch of simoleons. And simoleons are sort of in-game monetary units that the Sims use. Um, let's go spend some of his, his simoleons to upgrade his house and customize a little bit here. Um, you'll see that there's a lot of different features we can choose to customize his house, whether they're things like stereos or bookcases or you know, special bathroom utilities. Um, but you'll notice at the very top of the screen, let's scroll back to the top, you see there's a red icon that indicates new features available. right? So these are new features that are being populated over our servers, over the network. Let's go pick that Hi-Fi stereo pack, because that looks kind of like something fun we might want to play with. Now here you see the indicator for in-app commerce, so we're going to go ahead and purchase that, that item. Um, and this item that we're purchasing and we're going to bring into the game isn't just cosmetic. It actually has gameplay value and modifies the features of the game. So let's go ahead and bring that in and put it probably in the living room. Um, so we showed you a little bit of in-app commerce. The second thing we're going to show you is the media access. So this particular stereo, yeah, he can, Scott likes it. Um, so you can see uh, we're going to use, we're using in-app commerce. Now we're going to use the media center. So go ahead and tap the stereo and we're going to play music directly off the iPhone or the iPod touch. He seems to like that. 
And if you don't like that music, you can tap it again and go to the next song. That seems pretty good. So we're hoping that if our sims like it this much, so will our consumers. And that's an example of what you can do with the SDK 3.0 um, for iPhone. And uh, that's The Sims 3 and we're Electronic Arts. Thanks everybody. I don't dance like Elaine. Uh, <laughs> I love the fact that they're, they're accessing the built-in iPod music library right from the application now, available now in iPhone 3.0. Next up is Oracle. Oracle is the largest business software company in the world. And they're already serving both their and our joint enterprise customers with five applications on the App Store. To talk you through their experiences with the iPhone 3.0 SDK, I'd like to bring up Hody Crouch. Hody? Thank you, Scott. <laughs> At Oracle, we've had tremendous success with the iPhone. In a very short period of time, we brought out a total of five new iPhone apps, and the response has been truly amazing. So we jumped at the chance to come, come here to Cupertino and enhance some of our apps with the new features of the iPhone 3.0 SDK. Let's imagine that Chris here is a vice president of manufacturing for a toy company. He's on his way to meet with a, a new supplier, when as you see here, he's gotten an alert on his iPhone. So by tapping the view button here on his uh, iPhone, Oracle Business Indicators is automatically launched. The app establishes a secure connection back to the enterprise and retrieves more details about the alert. It looks like we've got a critical problem on our teddy bear production line. <laughs> and as we see here, we're running critically low on plastic eyes for the teddy bears. And nobody wants yet another victim of the worldwide shortage in teddy bear eyes. So Chris is responsible for several factories, and so he's often on the road. He loves how he can use his iPhone with Oracle Business Indicators to keep tabs on the performance of his organization. And he can use that updated information as he goes into the meeting with the supplier to get an immediate resolution to the problem. Now, even though this supplier has stepped up to the plate and is helping solve our issue, there's still going to be a brief delay in delivering these outstanding orders. So again, using the power of business indicators, we can go in and view the outstanding orders. And as we see here, it looks like Bears and Mora, a key local retailer, is going to have the, the most impact. So we'd like to reach out to them and, and make sure that they're well informed as, as we go through the process. So again, Chris can use uh, Oracle Mobile Sales Assistant to retrieve more information about the Bears and Mora account. This uh, mobile sales application uh, goes into our, our back end CRM system, again, establishes a secure connection back to the enterprise and pulls up this uh, additional data. So as he scrolls down, we can see the account representative listed in the owner field. And in a few short steps, without even leaving the application, he can send an email directly to that account rep so that they can keep the customer informed while we fill their outstanding order. Even though Chris is at, on the road a lot, he can keep in constant contact, receive these alerts as he's, uh, as he's out there, and respond immediately to changing business conditions. Now in real life, Chris is a member of our CRM product development team. Along with members of our business, uh, business intelligence team, we were able to modify two of those five applications I talked about earlier with the new capabilities of the iPhone SDK, including email sheet and push notifications. Thank you, everyone, and happy St. Patrick's Day. <clears throat> Thanks, Hody. You know, J.D. Power and Associates recently ran a survey of business smartphone users. And the iPhone ranked number one in customer satisfaction. Number one in customer satisfaction among business smartphone users. Business users love the iPhone, and they love it even more because of apps like this from Oracle. So thank you. Next is ESPN. ESPN, as I'm sure you know, is the worldwide leader in sports. And it's certainly where I turn for all of my sports scores and news. They have one of the best web apps out there for the iPhone. And now, with iPhone 3.0, they're moving into native app development. To talk you through their experiences, I'd like to invite up OK Ocaro. Thank you. 
the ability for ESPN to be within arm's reach throughout the day pre presents a truly unique opportunity that we have long embraced and are using to deepen our relationship with sports fans. Today, we have a wildly popular alert service delivering over 50 million alerts per month to sports fans around the country. And we're here today because the new capabilities that are coming in the new iPhone 3.0 SDK will enable us to step things up on the iPhone in a big way. <laughs> <clears throat> so, using the push notification service, we're able to play the tone that you just heard and update the badge number on our application. So let's see what's going on. Now, the video you're about to see is actually the highlight from the Big East game from last Thursday between UConn and Syracuse that went to a historic six overtimes. Tied at 110, sixth overtime. You know what? It's funny you mention that. Andy Routens <clears throat> had 20, all but two of them on threes. That three-pointer gave Syracuse their first lead in overtime. Their first lead since they were two and a half minutes left in regulation. Unbelievable. Now that was an amazing game with a truly spectacular finish. Today, though, in order to get that video from us, you would need to visit us and pull it. As you saw, we can now bring that to you. That's not all, though. Because what you can't see that's going on behind the scenes is that we're using the new media player, which automatically delivers the best video experience based on the bandwidth that you have. So if you come in on a 3G connection, you will get the best video quality experience for 3G. If you come in on a Wi-Fi connection, you will get the best video quality experience for Wi-Fi. So why is that a big deal for us? Well, first off, we are very focused on trying to deliver the best quality experience possible. And today, um, we often have to deliver for the lowest common denominator. With this, we don't have to do that. The new media player does the heavy lifting for us. Very good news. But again, that's not all. So at ESPN, we are very focused on delivering a very well-rounded experience. So with that, what I mean is, you know, as, as Scott had mentioned, we have a very highly trafficked iPhone web app. So for people who are seeking more information than the alert, we are integrating with our mobile website so that they can get the analysis or the statistics or the stories behind uh, the actual alert. So hopefully what we have shown has given you a little bit of a taste for what can be done with these new capabilities. And we at ESPN look forward to using them to continue to delight sports fans. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> now, as OK said, ESPN delivers over 50 million alerts a month. And it was because of volumes like those that we had to spend the last six months re-architecting the push notification service. <laughs> now we can. Next up is LifeScan. LifeScan is a Johnson & Johnson company, and it is the market leader in glucose monitoring. And in fact, in 1987, they pioneered the modern era of testing with the introduction of OneTouch technology. To talk you through their experiences and what they believe they can bring to bear with iPhone 3.0, I'd like to invite up Anita Matthew. Anita? Thanks, Linda. I'm also here with my colleague, Ian Shadford. We're from LifeScan, a Johnson & Johnson company. And our vision at LifeScan is to create a world without limits for people with diabetes. Diabetes can be a challenging disease, and people often struggle managing the disease and living a normal life. So what we've created for you today is a groundbreaking prototype with tools to simplify diabetes management. Let's imagine we are walking in the shoes of Maddie, a 15-year-old girl with diabetes. Maddie lives an active life. She tests her glucose at least six times a day. She also gives herself multiple injections of insulin, especially one to cover each meal. 
let's say Maddie's at school. The first thing Maddie has to do is it's lunchtime, and she has to decide what, how much insulin to take to cover her meal. The first thing she has to do is to prick her finger and take her glucose reading with her one-touch system. You can see Maddie has to do this at least six times a day. That could be painful. Now, given the new iPhone 3.0 SDK, the meter can now transmit the reading to at Maddie's cool iPhone over, over the Bluetooth or the iPhone 30.0. 30, 30 pin connector. Maddie's iPhone is the envy of all her friends. And now she has her reading on her, on her iPhone. Once on the iPhone, Maddie can mark her reading as fasting before meal or after meal. She can also add a note. In addition to that, now she needs to understand what is it that she's going to eat for lunch that day. So she proceeds to the meal builder. Let's say Maddie is going to have for lunch today pizza and a glass of milk. Food is a big issue for people with diabetes. Every time they put something in their mouth, they're having to estimate exactly how is that going to affect my glucose levels. Well, now she knows that she's going to have 46 grams of carbohydrates. The next thing Maddie does is she progresses to the insulin calculator. And her insulin dose is automatically calculated for her using her insulin sensitivity factor, her carbohydrate ratio, as well as the glucose reading that she just had. Well, Maddie has swim practice today, and swimming lowers Maddie's glucose levels. So instead of taking the 4.6 units that was calculated for Maddie, Maddie's going to lower her dose. And she's going to take four units. Keep in mind, most of this math has always been done in Maddie's head. Now it's done for her via this application. Diabetes is also a very lonely disease. And when at school, Maddie is pretty much left to her own to manage it. Given that she has the iPhone now, she can, she can communicate with the greater diabetes community and get the support of people like her caretakers, her parents, her doctors, etc. In addition to that, given the new capabilities of the SDK, Maddie can let her parents know she's OK by sending them a message with her glucose numbers and how she's feeling. Diabetes is a complex disease, and it's complicated in managing, both in the short term, when you have to decide how much insulin you're giving yourself, as well as in the long term to prevent complications such as kidney disease and um, blindness. So Maddie wants to manage her glucose levels and stay in range at all times. So we have given her a history view of all of her readings. It's got her glucose readings, the insulin value she has with it, and the time and date in which she, she took the reading. In addition to that, though, it's often difficult to view um, trends and patterns by looking at a list. So we can give Maddie a graphical representation of this information. You can see Maddie is within range most of the time. However, there are a few exceptions, and she wants to understand why. So she taps on the dot, and she gets the idea that it is a, it's a below her reading is 65, but she wants more information. So she taps on it again, and she gets the specifics of that reading. As you can see here, it was before a swim meet, and Maddie was really anxious. So what does that mean for Maddie? That means all she has to do is next time lower her insulin dose a little bit more than she did that uh, when she has a swim practice. Okay, So she knows exactly what to do. As you can see, we have provided Maddie with the tools she needs that fit, make diabetes management easier and fit right into her lifestyle. We will continue to create a world without limits for people with diabetes by partnering with Apple and using the new SDK. We will also work closely with the global health authorities, such as the FDA, to ensure that we are compliant and meet all regulatory requirements. Our goal is, our goal is to move people from managing a burdensome disease to intuitively managing a lifestyle 
creating the opportunity for them to have better health outcomes and a better quality of life. Thank you. Thanks. So imagine the possibilities. You know, when you have your iPhone, it's always with you. It's always connected. And now it can talk directly to accessories like that glucose meter. We think it's profound. Next, NG Moco. NG Moco is a startup company that was created to develop games exclusively for the iPhone and the iPod Touch. In fact, they were one of the first companies funded by the iFund, which was, which was announced a year ago here on the stage by Kleiner Perkins. To give you a sneak peek at a couple new games they're working on, I'd like to invite up Neil Young. Neil? Welcome. Hello. Um, we uh, created our company because we believed that the iPhone could revolutionize gaming. It is such an incredible device for playing games on. With multi-touch and accelerometer for controls, rich graphics and sound, access to your media, it's a wonderful device. But more importantly, it's always on, it's always with you, and it's always connected to the network. And it's the potential of that network connectivity that is so exciting to us as game makers. It can enable new types of social play, new types of gameplay experiences, and new ways for us as game makers to commercialize our work. Today, we're going to, to show you two games that we're working on at NG Moco that couldn't be further apart in terms of their content, um, but both take advantage of that network connectivity and the new features of Apple's 3.0 SDK. The first is Touch Pets, our social pet simulator. And the second is a worldwide sneak peek exclusive look at Live Fire, our multiplayer first person shooter that can be played over Wi Fi and 3G. Uh, to help me demo those products, I'd like to introduce Chris Plummer, who's uh, petting puppies in the morning and fragging noobs at night. <laughs> so, Chris, uh, take it away. OK, thanks, Neil. <clears throat> so as you just heard, I, I just received a push notification, one of the new features of SDK 3.0. This is an invitation to a play date with someone else's dog. So I'm going to accept that, launch the app. So Touch Pets Dogs is the first virtual pet game with its own embedded social network. Um, there's tons of things you could do in the game, from teaching your dog to tricks and going on adventures and having play dates with other people's dogs on your device, which is what we're going to do in just a moment. So this is my play date. My dog Scruff is uh, the Jack Russell here on the right. That's Scruff. And his date is uh, with mittens. This uh, hot looking uh, dachshund right here. Now, by lifting up my finger, I can drag the dogs around. You know, we're really excited about this because the AI is so sophisticated in the game. I can teach my dog um, all kinds of skills. They develop emotions and relationships. Now, Scruff is looking for love, and I really want this play date to go well for him. So why don't we go to the store and buy him something really cool to wear? So I'll just launch the Touch Pet store. Now as you play the game, you earn puppy points, and with that I can buy literally hundreds of different uh, items, special items to take on missions, gifts that I can give to other dogs on play dates, uh, toys of course, food, um, care items, and apparel. Now if I don't like anything that I see here, I can look at the bottom right corner of the screen, it tells me there's some more item packs that I can purchase, I'm gonna just launch that. I see there's three different item packs. I'm gonna buy the shirt pack, this launches the in-app commerce API. I'm gonna accept this from my iTunes account. I now have a shirt pack. And as I return to the game, and check and see how the little pups are doing. I'm uh, just checking it out over here. I'm gonna launch uh, Scruff's inventory. He's got a lot of different items. Um, as I played previously, I earned this cool little baseball cap, a uh, little collar, and how about this shirt from the shirt pack? Okay, so now I think uh, Scruff is looking pretty cool. I'll give him a little pet with the, uh, come here Scruff. Come here buddy. There you go. I think he's looking pretty cute now. With the stroke of my finger, I can give him a little pet. Oh, look at those hearts. He's looking awfully cute. I think he's super happy. If he has a successful play date, the results will be broadcast on the Touch Pet social network for all of his friends to see. <laughs> so that's a little example of uh, Touch Pet's dogs. Now, let me jump immediately into something totally different, which is live fire. Uh, we are so excited. <laughs> We're so excited, NG Moco, to bring really the king of all gaming genres to the iPhone uh, with the features of SDK 3.0 that really allow us to take our vision and push the genre forward in places it's never been before. 
So I'm going to launch into a global game server with other players. I think we'll run into Tim, who's our lead engineer. Right now, I just pressed anywhere on the left side of the screen uh, to create a touch control with our touch anywhere controls. I can move, I can look, just like any first person shooter. I tap the center of the screen and I can zoom. We also have just shake the jump. Oh, wait a minute, there's Tim. Oh. All right, that didn't take long. <laughs> So if you've ever played a first person shooter for the first time, that may have happened to you. Now, our answer to that in live fire is a call for help. So thanks to SDK 3.0, I'm just gonna pull up my NGMoco friends list. Now, Neil, who's not only made a lot of first person shooters, he's pretty good at playing them. I'm gonna send him a push notification. I don't care if he's out to lunch right now or he's on stage giving a presentation. Nothing's more important than helping me out right now. So in a moment, uh, Neil should probably join the global server. Hopefully you'll accept my uh, invitation, Neil. And while we're waiting for him, I can also bring up um, one of the other features, which is in-app commerce, and I'm gonna just level up my firepower. There's a lot of items here that I could purchase right now. How about a rocket launcher? Yes. Okay, so now armed with rocket launcher, and uh, there's Neil. Hey, Neil, why don't we uh, try and take the high ground? I've got a wingman with me now. Again, features that really were not possible before SDK 3.0. Now we've got wingman and teammate. We're gonna cruise around, see if we can pin down Tim. Going down. You see him? Oh wait, he just jumped down here. Come on, down, down, down. I'm going, I'm going. Moving the back, moving the back. All right. So that's a world exclusive first look at Live Fire. We're so excited to bring this exclusively to the App Store later this year. Thank you very much. Thanks. Now, NGMoco continues to amaze us, both with the quantity of applications they're creating and the quality. And I have no idea how they have the same developers writing both those applications. <laughs> uh, <laughs> great. Next is Smule. Smule is the creator of the wildly popular Ocarina music application. Over, uh, users of Ocarina have listened to, listened to each other in over 40 million performances around the world. And I'd like to invite up Dr. Go Wang today to talk to you about a brand new musical instrument they're creating in iPhone 3.0. Dr. Wang. Thank you, Scott. Joining me on stage is David Zhu. I'm Ge. I'm an assistant professor at Stanford University in the Center for Computer Research in Music and Acoustics. By the way, that shortens to CCRMA and is pronounced karma. I direct the Stanford Laptop Orchestra, that shorns to Slork, as well as the upcoming Stanford Mobile Phone Orchestra, that shorns to Mofo, but it's spelled with a PH, um, <laughs> featuring all iPhone, iPod touches, and wearable speakers. Leveraging technology with music to change the way we think and do has always been at the core of my mission as a computer music researcher. Driven by that mission and by the immense potential of the iPhone platform, I co-founded Smule in 2008. It's fair to say that without the iPhone and the SDK, there would literally be no Smule today. In November 2008, our team created Ocarina, which transformed the iPhone into a magical flute-like musical instrument, leveraging the physical interactions of breath, multi-touch, and tilt. Ocarina's social features are allowing its more than 700,000 users to listen to each other play around the world. Our users have also created more than 1,200 unique musical scores, earning millions of hits on the forums of people trying to learn the ocarina or just trying to learn music for the first time on their iPhone. All of this showing that it is possible to create new types of global communities on this platform virtually overnight. It is our belief that everyone is inherently creative and expressive, and it is our mission at Smule to unlock and encourage that creativity in everyone and to find ways to bring people together in a new type of expressive, mobile, and social medium. For these reasons, we're extremely excited about S iPhone 3.0 SDK, for it enables us to further our vision. Today, we're going to give you a sneak peek of the upcoming Smule application and how we've used the SDK to enable some exciting features. Leaf Trombone World Stage invites everyone to learn a new whimsical, wacky musical instrument and to use that to audition and perform for the world stage 
in perhaps the world's first massively online social music gaming experience. To give you an idea of the instrument itself, a leaf trombone slide on the right side moves up and down, controlling pitch. Buttons on the top left shifts the range of the octaves, giving the instrument three full octaves. On the bottom left, a music box accompanies you, while the app gives you hints as to where to position the slide next. All you have to do to play this instrument is to follow along and blow into the microphone at the right times. Using the SDK's game kit, we've actually added a new exciting face-to-face -face feature, Duet Play, which allows two leaf trombonists in close proximity to discover and synchronize with each other over Bluetooth, enabling a multi-part performance. To give you a demo, Dave and I will perform a little ditty for you. Look for more information on Leaf Trombone World Stage in the coming weeks and for these new exciting new features with iPhone 3.0. This is Phantom of the Opera on Leaf Trombone. Great job, Thank fantastic. You. How can I go on after that? Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, like, the duet was being played because they're using that connection API to tie those two iPhones right together. Just incredible, incredible. You know, when we created the iPhone SDK, it was to make developers successful. And we worked really hard to do that. And it's because of developers, like all those who showed things today, that we get up in the morning and work our asses off. We, we love it, uh, and we love to see what's coming out of these developers, and we'll keep on doing it. Now, as I'd said earlier, iPhone 3.0 brings a lot of incredible features for developers. It also brings them for our customers. And in fact, iPhone 3.0 has more than 100 new features for our customers. Let me walk you through just a few, starting <laughs> with cut, copy, and paste. So we have been working really hard to design a easy to use, straightforward user interface for cut, copy, and paste on our large touchscreen display. And we think we've nailed it. Let me go ahead and just demo it for you now. Here's my phone running iPhone 3.0. Now I'll go here. Let me launch Mail. Let me scroll down a little. And here's a message here from Daniel Vincent. Uh, I guess we're going to some conference in Hawaii. He wants to know what flight I want to take. Uh, and uh, what I'd like to do there. I'll go ahead and reply to him. And I'll scroll down, and uh, here's how you now select text on the phone. That's it. You double tap onto the text, and it automatically selects that text. So I'd like to fly uh, Oceanic Flight 815. Uh, it, you can see it puts these little grab points at the end of the selection, and then it automatically puts this cut, copy, paste bubble directly above your current selection. I'll say copy. I'll scroll back to the top of the message, double tap to bring up this paste bubble, and paste. That's it. That is copy and paste in iPhone 3.0. Now let me go ahead and select this again, double tap to select it, and I'll cut it. Let's say I want to select the entire block down here. 
Again, double tack to select that. And now I'll put my thumb on that right grab point. I get a magnifier for the selection. Drag it down, select that entire block, and say copy. I've now selected the whole block. Again, drag back to the top, double tap, and paste. So is that easy to select whole blocks, you know, multiple words, paragraphs, anything? Now that's copying and pasting within one application. But of course, we made copy paste work across all applications. So let me leave this application and I'll go out to notes. And here in notes, I have a note with some restaurants for Oahu. So I'll go ahead and uh, select that note. And these are the Oahu restaurants here. I'll just put my finger down, bring up that standard magnifier. When I let go, I get the selection bubble. Say select all, so selecting all the text in this note, copy it, leave notes to go back to mail. And again, I just tap, let me go down one line, tap to bring up that bubble, paste, and now we've copied across applications, so it's that easy. Uh, in addition to copying plain text, this is plain text, we also copy web content. So let me leave here and go to Safari. We copy HTML. Here's a web page on uh, things to do in Hawaii. Let me double tap to zoom in a little. And what do I want to do? I'd like to swim with the dolphins. So all I do is I put my finger and hold it down here. It automatically selects that block. In fact, you know, we have this analytics engine in uh, Safari that analyzes the layout, the logical layout of the page. And that's how we zoom into the right region when you double tap. We use that here when doing selections. So in fact, if I want to extend the selection, I just grab on that grab point in the bottom, drag it down, and now I've selected two blocks. Go ahead and copy that, HTML content, leave here, go back to mail, tap to bring up that paste bubble, and paste. So HTML copying across applications. Now let's say that I didn't mean to paste that, or I typed something I didn't mean to. Well, all you have to do is shake to undo. <laughs> you shake your phone, it gives you the options. I can say undo, paste, undo. I can shake it again. I can redo it. So you can undo and redo multiple times. I'll go ahead, undo that. All right. Let's show uh, from another application. I'll go out to our messages application. And here, uh, I think someone sent me some information about the, uh, the Iolani Palace uh, in SMS as a text message. So right here at the bottom bubble, say we took a great tour of the Iolani Palace. Just put my finger down, hold it, get that, it selects that entire bubble, gives me that copy selection above. I'll say copy, leave, go back into mail, Again, just tap to bring up that paste bubble. And now I've pasted from SMS right into mail. So across all these key applications. Now, so far, I've only shown copying and pasting from our applications. But of course, this works for third-party apps as well. So I'm going to leave here. I'll go over to, uh, here's Wikimobile. This is a native third-party application. It's a front end to Wikipedia. So I'll launch into here, and it has a, an article about the Iolani Palace. You can scroll down. Let's go for palace tours. Expand that out. And here's some tour information. So let's put my finger down. It automatically selected it. You can actually drag around to change your selection if you'd like, uh, if you didn't select the right thing. But I like that one. Copy. Leave there. Go back to mail. Tap to bring up that paste bubble and paste. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you, uh, and that is photos. We've had requests to send more than one photo at a time. And now in iPhone 3.0, you can do that. Let me go into Photos. And I'll choose, uh, I think I have an Oahu album in here. Here it is. So let me go ahead. I'll tap on that action button in the bottom. We're in selection mode now. I'll select the Iolani Palace. Select that lighthouse. I'll say copy. Copies both of those photos. Leave here, go back to mail, and again, simple, tap to bring up that paste bubble, paste, and I've now pasted multiple photos right into mail. So copy, paste, and iPhone 3.0.
So we're bringing cut, copy, and paste to the iPhone and iPod Touch. It works across all applications, both our built-in applications and developer applications from the App Store. We have Shake to Undo as well. And they are developer APIs. So if there's a data type you'd like to put on the pasteboard, you can use the APIs to do that. And the Coco Touch controls have support for copy-paste built in. So if you're using the built-in Cocoa Touch controls, depending how you use them, adding cut, copy, paste to your application will either be no work at all or very minimal work. Cut, copy, paste. Next, landscape. Ever since iPhone 1.0, ever since the beginning, we had support for landscape built into Safari. We used the accelerometer, and so when you uh, just moved it from portrait to landscape, we automatically relayed out the page in landscape. This is great for reading some uh, stories on the web. A number of our users also love the fact that if they wanted to enter text into the web, they could use that big widescreen landscape keyboard we had. Well, we're now in iPhone 3.0, taking landscape and that landscape keyboard to all of our key applications, starting with mail. So now in iPhone 3.0, when you rotate from portrait to landscape, mail automatically relays out in landscape. This is great for reading some messages, especially if you get a nice widescreen attachment. You can see the whole thing right there in the window. We're also adding support to use that landscape keyboard to compose new messages. So landscape and mail. Next, notes. Again, in portrait, if you rotate to landscape, it'll automatically relay out. And you can use that big landscape keyboard to create new notes or edit existing notes. We're also doing it for our messages application. So again, portrait support, rotate to landscape, relays out, and you can use that landscape keyboard for new messages. So landscape now taken to all of our key applications. Next, messages. We have a fantastic text messaging application built into the iPhone. And we have some nice enhancements in iPhone 3.0, starting with the ability to forward and delete messages. You can forward and delete individual messages and also multiple messages. So you can select multiple messages and forward all of them together. But the big news for the messages application is we're adding support for MMS. So this, this is support for multimedia. You can now send and receive photos right over the cell uh, network. You can send and receive contacts. We use the vCard standard here. So when you receive a vCard, you can automatically add it to your contact list. Send and receive audio files. And you can listen to those audio files right inside the application. And you can even send and receive locations. So you can go to the Maps application. Let's say you're going to meet someone at a location, or someone's coming from out of town, you want to send them directions to the hotel, you can send them that location right from Maps. And all of this has been added directly into the existing application. So now you have one app to send and receive text, photos, contacts, audio files, and locations. That is what we're doing with messages. Next is a brand new application, and that's voice memos, and it's gorgeous. This is what it looks like when you're recording a voice memo. You can re use this to uh, record voice memos to yourself, to record lectures or interviews. It'll use the built-in microphone. You can also plug in an external microphone. Once you've recorded it, you can edit that by trimming the memo, and then you can share it, either by sending it over email or you can send it over MMS. So voice memos built in to the home screen with iPhone 3.0. Next, calendar. In iPhone 1.0, we supported personal calendars. So you could create appointments for yourself, meetings, and it's synchronized between your phone and your Mac or PC using iTunes. Last year, in iPhone 2.0, we added support for Exchange. And this was always up to date, because we synchronized over the air using ActiveSync. So your calendar was always up to date. And we actually allowed you to either view your personal calendars or your exchange calendars, or you could combine them on one calendar application. 
This year, we're adding support for two additional calendar types. The first is CalDAV. So CalDAV is a calendaring standard that's supported by Yahoo, by Google, by Oracle, uh, by Mac OS X server, and a lot of others. And it's great for shared calendars. So you could have like a, a shared family calendar where everyone in the family has access to it and sees the changes that anyone else makes. So CalDAV. And next is support for subscriptions. So this is the ICS format. It allows you to subscribe to things like your favorite sports team schedule, or you know, movie premieres, or national holidays. So some really nice additions to the calendar application. Next is stocks. We have some nice additions here to stocks. This is what our stocks application looks like today. We're adding support for news stories, headlines, right at the bottom of the application. We're also adding support for details right in here. So you see highs and lows, PEs, and even market cap right here in the app. We've also added a landscape view. So when you turn it to landscape, you get this nice big chart. If you put one finger down, you can see the stock price at that point in time. And if you put two fingers down, you can see the delta between those two points. So some nice additions to the stocks application. Next is search. Last year with iPhone 2.0, we added support for search into the contacts application. And our customers told us they love this, the ability to quickly search across all their contacts and find what they're looking for. Well, this year, we're adding search to all of our key applications, starting with mail. In iPhone 3.0, you'll be able to search messages from someone, to someone, search subjects, and search all headers. In addition, if the message you're looking for isn't on your iPhone, you can continue that search on the server. Now, this is supported by Exchange 2007 and most IMAP servers. So it'll continue that search on the server, respond with all the results, and you can view those messages right on your iPhone. So search in mail. Next, we're also adding search in calendar. So you can search across the calendar for that appointment you're looking for. Also, search in iPod. Search for you know, all of your songs, but artist, album, song name. You can also search for all your music, videos, TV shows. And search in notes, by the title of the note or the entire body of the note. So we're adding search to all of these applications. But we didn't stop there. We thought, wouldn't it be nice if there was a single location you could go to search across all of these applications. And that's exactly what we did. We created a new home screen where you can search across all of those applications, and we call it Spotlight. And so now to the left of the other home screens, there's a single location where you can search across your phone. You see at the bottom here, where we show what home screen you're on, there's a new icon on the left, which is for Spotlight. Let me go ahead and demo that for you now. So here we are uh, on our home screen. I'll just flick to the left, and that is Spotlight. Again, here's the home screen you're used to. Here is Spotlight. I'll go ahead and search for, let's say, Tim. T-I-M. Go ahead and say search. Now it's searched across the entire, you know, the phone. To the first couple results, those are contacts. So if I tap here on Tim Young, it takes me directly to that contact inside of the phone application. And from there, you could dial him. You could send an email, could go and look up uh, his location based on uh, here in Maps. Let me go back to the home screen. The next three items, New York Times, the Time Machine, and Times Square, those are all applications. If you're like me and you have well over 100 applications on your phone, this makes it really easy to find and launch an application quickly. I can just tap on, let's say, the Time Machine, launches that ebook application right there, and now I'm reading it. Let's go back to the home screen and to Time Machine. The next three items, that's searching my entire music library, the iPod library. So I'll tap on Take 5. That's on the Time Out uh, album, so it matches T-I-M. And again, just starts playing. So it's that easy. If you want to play some music, go right to, uh, to Spotlight, search for what you're looking for, and play it. Back here in Spotlight, you can see the next one, it found uh, a note. 
that had TIM in it. Uh, I found two email messages. Again, I could jump right to those. And even a calendar appointment. And that is right next to your home screen, a brand new home screen to search across your phone. That is Spotlight. So, Spotlight, a single convenient place to search across your phone. We think you're going to love it. And again, these are only a few of the more than 100 new features that come as part of iPhone 3.0. There are so many more. I want to touch on a few of these because they're important. Uh, note sync. If you take notes on your iPhone, they'll now synchronize with your Mac or your PC using iTunes. Uh, shake to shuffle. We're taking a popular feature of the Nano and bringing it to the iPhone and iPod Touch. Wi-Fi auto login. This allows you to automatically log into your favorite Wi-Fi hotspot. So for instance, if you have an account at Starbucks for their Wi-Fi hotspots, when you go in, it'll automatically connect you to that Wi-Fi hotspot and you can use it. And when you leave, it'll automatically disconnect. Stereo Bluetooth. We're adding support for the A2DP profile of Bluetooth, so you can now use your stereo Bluetooth headphones and your stereo Bluetooth speakers. There's some nice additions to Safari, anti-phishing to help protect you against scams on the internet, and autofill. So it'll remember your names and passwords for the favorite websites you go to, making it easy to log in. Parental controls. We're extending parental controls to include TV shows, movies, and even applications from the App Store. Languages. We have greatly enhanced the language support by adding support for more languages and really improving the keyboards for languages around the world. And YouTube. You can now log in to your YouTube account, which allows you to share your favorites between your iPhone, your desktop, and even Apple TV. And you can also subscribe to your friends' YouTube channels right on your iPhone. So iPhone 3.0. We are so excited about this. There are incredible features for developers and for our customers. Just quickly, let me recap the, high, the big ones. In-app purchase, a new purchase model enabling things like subscriptions and additional game levels. Peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, enabling peer-to-peer -peer games and other peer-to-peer -peer apps. Accessories. Now you can write custom applications that talk directly to your accessory. Maps, a built-in map control that you can embed in your application. Push notifications, a generic push notification service for all developers. Cut, copy, and paste, and undo. Landscape, and that landscape keyboard taken to all of our key applications. Messages, now support for MMS. A new application, voice memos for recording audio files. Calendar, now support for CalDAV and subscriptions. Some nice enhancements to the stock application. Search across all the key applications and Spotlight, a single location on the home screen to search across your phone. And these are only a few of the more than 100 new features and more than 1,000 new APIs that make up iPhone OS 3.0. We're really excited about this. It is a major update to the operating system. And I can't wait until you get your hands on it. And to tell you how you're going to do that, I'd like to turn it back over to JAWS. Thanks. So we hope you're as excited about this release as we are. And of course, how are you going to get it? How are we going to make it available? Well, we're going to first make it available as a developer beta. And the good news is we're going to make that beta available today. Further good news, it's going to be available to everyone in our iPhone developer program. And even if you haven't joined the program yet, there's still time. Because if you join during the beta program, we'll give you access to that beta as well. And starting today, we'll have all kinds of information available on our developer website to make sure you get the most out of your iPhone OS 3.0 development. Much more technical information on everything 
that Scott showed you today and you saw some developers already taking advantage of. And we'll be hosting developer forums so you can help each other with your development as issues arise and you figure out how to, again, make the most out of iPhone OS 3.0 development. And we've designed iPhone OS 3.0 to be compatible with the thousands and thousands of apps that are on the App Store. But like any major release, you should test that as developers. And with the beta being available today, you should start your testing now. Now, I mentioned that the iPhone was available in 80 countries around the world. Well, the App Store has been available in 62 of those countries. We're also announcing that we're adding 15 more countries to the list. So the App Store will now be available in 77 countries around the world. Again, further increasing the audience for which you can sell your apps. Now, to take advantage of those additional countries, as well as, again, getting more information on everything we talked about today, we encourage all developers to go to developer.apple.com. But how about the rest of us? You know that iPhone OS 3.0 is going to be a great customer release when it's available. And we're going to ship it this summer. And we're going to ship it as a customer update, software update, free to all of our iPhone 3G customers. And as a special bonus, we've even enabled it to work on the original iPhones. Now, the hardware has changed enough between these two devices that not all the features will be available on the original iPhone. For instance, MMS and stereo Bluetooth will not be available on the original iPhone. But the vast majority of features will. So again, a free update for iPhone customers. We're also making it available as a software update for all our iPod Touch customers, and as both generations. And as you know, we charge for significant updates for the iPod Touch, but I think you'd agree at $9.95 for $10 that it's a, it's a great value for all that new capability. So that's iPhone OS 3.0. Over 1,000 new APIs for developers. Over 100 new features for customers. And that developer beta available today and shipping for the rest of us this summer. So Scott and I would like to thank you all for showing up, spending your morning with us. We really look forward to the amazing things developers are going to do with this release to excite our customers this summer. So thank you very much.